Hey guys, good morning. Hi, good morning. So, uh, were you guys able to set up uh, the Cloud Era Quick Start VM and check whether Hadoop services are running on your VMs or not? Did anyone, if, no, did anyone face any issues there? Because you got a weekend, three days gap. I hope everybody should have completed this. Okay. I think Akila has done, Anand has done. Hashita, I hope so. Hemant, it's also done. Okay. So, yes, Murli, Hemant, I'm good. Uh, yes, I did it and didn't face any problem. Pochana completed. So Narendra, I think Srinivas also completed that. Uh, Swaroop, I think even he should have completed. Swaroop, did you complete a setup of your Kickstart VM? Cloud at Kickstart VM and were you able to start up that? Think he's not responding. Okay, let me talk to him. Okay. So I had problem with uh, VMware. Okay. Uh, so what was the problem, Hasta? For some reason, it just didn't start playing. So when you load your quick start VM, uh, is it simply uh, flashes out? The logs it was showing couldn't find the configuration file. Okay. So why don't you reinstall your VMware? This is an old one or something. Uh, okay, you just did that. So it, even then, uh, it didn't work. So what is the version of VMware that you are trying to install? Like 4.6 GB. It's responding very slowly. Uh, it depends on the processor motherboard that you have, uh, Srinivas. 4.6 GB is okay, okay memory. It's not too good memory that I can say like uh, it should run very fast. Okay, so I'm using Windows 10. Would that be a compatibility problem? I used the one that you uploaded in Google Drive. Oh, you use the same one. Uh, on Windows 10, it should work fine because even mine is Windows 10. I'm running. The same dot exe file that I have that. Okay. So try once again. If not, uh, just uh, tell me your uh, issue. I will try to sit with you uh, time. I will sort out uh, your issue. Has okay. Okay. Um, give me a second. Uh, I will start. It's working fine. Hope won't post problem in future. 
Yeah, sure, no problem. Even if you if it posts, uh, just uh, ping me there in the WhatsApp. So how to use external drive? <clears throat> um, you don't have enough RAM memory, uh, enough hard disk memory in, in your laptop, Somya. I think if you have, that is sufficient. Native's case is different. He is having just 160 GB uh, with entire laptop itself. So that's why she had to do that. Okay. So l l uh, give me a minute. Uh, just. Uh, okay, guys, uh, let's get started. Uh, so actually others were, some of the guys were facing uh, connectivity issues. So I was solving that, okay. Just let me get started. So as we planned, uh, today we'll be discussing the basics of uh, Linux first. So Linux operating system uh, concepts first. So, I mean, only to the level where you need it as a Hadoop developer. Okay, so we are not going to the extent where you will be able to do the administration of Linux. So best as a user, user of a Linux operating system, how much ever you need. So bare minimum stuff, you will be discussing that. Okay. So uh, anyway, as you have you already have your quick start vm setup so just start your centos just either of these 5.5 or something so in that linux machine itself you can practice uh, all the examples and shell scripts uh, which i'm going to share and you can perform your assignments also in that only So if I get some time, I will start with the HDFS concepts. Otherwise, uh, we'll, be, we'll be resuming our HDFS concepts from tomorrow onwards. Okay. Let it get loaded. So mainly we'll be looking into what is Linux and uh, different types of Linux distributions that we use in the uh, industry and the enterprise organizations and its file system. Mainly how does its file system look like, the directory structures and bit about uh, shell and various commands. It could be file handling, text processing, or administration commands or advanced commands and different types of editors text editors 
and which one to uh, go with and pattern matching pattern matching is just uh, one of the advanced concepts but you just have uh, i will just introduce you to that and basic cell scripting and some of the environment variables how do you deal with them environment variables in Linux operating systems. Okay, so what is Linux? It's one another free open source operating system. Okay, so in big data world, in almost all the places, you will be dealing with all the open source softwares only. Your Hadoop is open source, Spark is open source, yeah, even the operating systems are open source. So everything comes for free for you. Only you need to pay money to get the commercial support. And it's a Unix type operating system and a, a GNU license, GNU GPL license. It's open source. So it's a multi-user and multitasking and multi-processor supporting is given by your Linux operating systems. So that means if you have one huge server, the Linux server, you can create multiple user accounts on the same server and multiple users can log in into the same machine at the same time. And they can be doing submitting their tasks at a time and your Linux operating system is a, uh, such a reliable enough to handle all those multiple tasks at the same time. Okay, so that is one reason why most of our servers will, uh, will be running on the Linux operating systems. And why is it so popular or famous? It's because of, one, because of it's free and open source. And second is it provides very strong security, very high security model. So you will rarely hear that the so Linux operating system got viruses. And you rarely find any antivirus softwares for Linux operating systems. We don't need to install any separate antivirus uh, systems like your Windows operating systems. Okay, so it's very rare scenario that you will, I mean, you hear about any of your Linux operating system got to viruses into that. And it supports multiple hardware platforms ranging from any configuration, low level configuration hardware to higher level, the server level configurations as well. Okay, so it can run on 4 GB, it can run on 8 GB, it can run on 256 GB, it can run on 756 GB efficiently. Okay. And some of the popular Linux file distributions, so across the industry you might have seen, might have heard at least these things. So one of them, the most popular one is Red Hat Enterprise Linux, RHEL, or CentOS. These two are RPM based. And there are some Debian based, Ubuntu uh, Debian based Linux distributions also. Uh, those are called uh, examples are like Ubuntu, uh, even Fedora is I think uh, under RPM only. But most of our, uh, our Linux or Hadoop clusters, you either you either observe uh, Ubuntu operating systems or CentOS or Red Hat, RHEL. In your real-time clusters, especially the your cloud era clusters, or Hortonworks clusters, you will see 
uh, your RHELs being used in the backend operating system. Okay, and especially Ubuntu 14.04 or above is recommended to play with the CDH 5.5 uh, or above. And the same case with RHEL 6.4 or above is the operating system that is recommended to use with. Okay, so here again, these uh, Linux distributions are of two types that I was telling, right? So one Ubuntu and some of the other operating systems are like Debian based. So all installable files for your um, Debian based systems will have .deb, .deb extension and for RHEL or RPM based, RPM based operating systems have installable files as .rpm extension. Okay, so Debian based Ubuntu RPM based package, Red Hat package manager. Something. Okay, so Ubuntu RHEL and CentOS. So these will have .dev extensions. These will have dot uh, rpm extensions, installable files. Same like in Windows, you will have dot exe or dot msi, Microsoft installer. Okay. So I got a question. So what is rpm? Uh, Red Hat Package Manager or uh, something like that. It's an extension. Okay. And there is a slight. Uh, difference in the installing of these packages in these operating systems, but you don't need to worry about that. Okay. Uh, remaining user level commands, they work uh, very similar. I mean, all regular user commands, apart from the install and installing commands, uh, they both look pretty similar. In, in both the types of operating systems. If you know the commands, and if you are able to run them in your Ubuntu operating system or CentOS, you can able to run in on the other as well. Okay, so those are different types of so distributions that you can get. And in any operating system, so the core logic, the core, uh, the processing software, I can say, the core software that deals with your hardware directly. It could be your reader, it could be your keyboard, it could be your mouse. So that deals with your hardware directly and that is the boss, bottom most software that is called as a kernel. In Linux operating systems, in almost all the Linux operating systems, you will have the kernel, the, the Unix kernel will be almost similar, almost same. So on top of that, they will write some extra wrappers or application, their own application, and they, they release it as a their own distribution. They will have uh, Intel operating system distribution, IBM has its own uh, Linux operating system. And yeah, many people can have their own uh, version of Linux operating system. The same way you have seen various distributions of Hadoop, but the core Apache Hadoop remains common in all the Hadoop distributions. Cloudera, Hartonworks, MapR, or Pivotal HD, or Microsoft HD Insights or IBM Big Insights, whatever the distributions are, the core part, the core part is 
taken from Apache Hadoop only. In the same way, whatever the distributions of these Linux, fill, uh, Linux operating systems are, the core kernel is taken from the Unix operating systems. Okay, so in order to deal with your kernel, see all your Linux operating system will provide you the shell or the terminal, which acts like a bridge between your kernel and the user. So user can interact with if, if he wants to read a particular text, he should read it from the keyboard, right? So to interact with the keyboard, kernel is required. So kernel will provide all the hardware interacting, uh, the IO calls. And to interact with kernel, so all your Linux systems will provide you shells, different types of shells, and in the shell, the user can type in their commands. Same like in Windows operating system, you'll have the command prompt. So in the command prompt, you can run all those things, right? So on top of shell, you will be able to develop applications. So user applications. So writing some hundred, hundreds of lines of code into one application and running that as a one bunch, bunch of bunch sequence of statements that is called nothing but an application. Okay, so kernel is nothing but a core of an operating system, interacts with the hardware, first to program to get loaded when the system starts and it is the last program when it gets the terminated. Okay, so now let's get, let's understand the file system as well the directory structure. So this is my Cloud Era Quick Start VM 5.5. So I hope uh, you guys are able to see it. I think it's getting hanged. It's responding a bit slowly. Give me Give me a second, I think it got stuck. So can we directly install the Hadoop in Linux system? Yes, that uh, we are doing that only, right? So we have Hadoop installed in, in our Linux machine only. So in CentOS only, that CentOS we are loading in the VMware workstation. Or if you don't have Windows operating system at all on your laptop and you have only the the uh, Linux operating system. Yes, even then you can either, I have shown you the different ways of installations, right? So three ways, Apache Hadoop and Cloudera and Hortonworks and easy, even within them. So install by parcels or install by uh, the Cloudera manager or Ambari. So either of ways you can, you can choose them. Okay. Or if you have the, uh, uh, so if you can install this VMware workstation on your machine and you can again have a, another VM there and load the pre-setup, pre-configured quick start VM that is given to you. So can you please come again the importance of kernel. 
So it is the core component of your operating system, Soumya. Uh, this that is the first one to get loaded when you, when your operating system uh, gets started, and that is the last application that gets turned off uh, when you turn off your machine while booting. Yes. Okay. Something wrong with this, uh, that's why. Okay. So let it get started, then I will show the file system. Might be a bit slow. So how do you end a task in Linux? Uh, I, I will show those things slowly, Neetu. Okay. So first I will show you how to view the processes, uh, list down the process, then, then I will show how to kill the process as well. Okay. So if you have GUI, there also you will find similar kind of uh, task manager. Okay. Turned off. Okay. Please let me start this. 5.4 VMware. Uh, Let me explain the importance of shell. Okay. So here uh, you can very well understand this. So shell is nothing but a command line interpreter, same like your command prompt on Windows machine. So bridge between this and mainly you will find four types of shells available in your Linux operating system. So basic, simple shell or bash shell, which is born again shell, K shell, console and C shell. So as a developer, you don't need to worry about uh, the differences between all these things and what is the shell that you will get in uh, by default of the stuff. Most, uh, so you will, by default, you will have a bash shell, both in Ubuntu and as well as in your CentOS. CentOS operating systems, even in your, most of your edge nodes on your cluster. So just uh, practice those, uh, the shell commands, whatever that you are able to run. So that is uh, sufficient, okay. So backend for administrators, so there will be minor differences between these shell types, and they sometimes they will enable the other shells also. But by default, the bash shell that comes with the Linux operating system is sufficient for us to deal with. Okay, and if this is the user, if he wants to interact with the hardware, he has to send the commands through shell and shell through kernel and kernel to hardware and again he will get the responses back to shell and he can see the responses there or if he writes all those executable statements into one big application so that application gets interacts with shell and from there to kernel and from there to hardware and he will get the results back in the same sequence Okay, so before jumping into the commands, I uh, just wanted to show the basics of file system. Okay, so let me hope at least this will not give me any trouble. Yeah. Just to make you familiarize with this uh, file operating system. So mainly under applications, uh, you can see any of your accessories related to text text pads. So same like your Notepad, uh, Notepad plus plus Word pad. You will find G Edit text editor and VI 
I am improved improved uh, textures. These two are text editors, and so same like your uh, in Windows, you will have MS Office in uh, CentOS or Ubuntu or RHEL. You will find LibreOffice. So with this LibreOffice, you can open all your MS Office related files. It could be dot docx or uh, or documents or PPTs or Excel sheets, all those things. Okay, so all those things can be opened by your LibreOffice uh, software. Otherwise, you will not be able to uh, open up your MS Office files. So this is that LibreOffice uh, stuff. And under system tools, you will have file browser. So this, this makes your life easy to browse here, all the files in the operating system. And the terminal to access everything on your operating system via the command line mode. Okay. So first let me show you the file browser. So to access file browser, uh, either you can click it from the computer. So this gets open and file system. So the difference between the file opening it through file browser and clicking it off from your desktop is that if I need to open any folder, see if I click on home, so it's opening in, in a new tab, in a new window, right? If I click on any of these things, it opens in a new window. So that's why I don't uh, like that. And even the home directory, you can access from the desktop itself. But the problem with this is, if I open any directory, it opens in a new window. So that's why I prefer always going to system tools, file browser. So if you open it from here, so if I traverse through, it will be under the same tab, uh, under the same window. So I can even open in multiple tabs. Okay. So documents in one tab, so root folder in one tab. But by default, this is your home directory. So if you open a system tools term file browser, so it opens the home directory only. So cloud error. Okay. And the same way, if you open your terminal, so by default, it points to your home directory. And to know currently in which directory you are present in, uh, first, if you want to understand this um, prompt, so this will have mainly three parts. So this is the username. Anything before this at symbol is the username with which you have logged into this operating system. So I logged in with username as Cloudera. And after followed after this at symbol will be the host name. And if your host name is too long to fit in this, this uh, prompt, it will uh, cut short that and it, it will print only half of that or something. Okay. But if you want to know the host name of your operating system, so you have a command host name. So this is your computer name, your machine name that is given to this CentOS. Okay. And after that, space in which directory you are present. This tilde symbol represents it's in home directory. Okay, so the tilde symbol denotes that it is your home directory. So also if you want to know the complete path of that, we have a print working directory command, pwd. So print working directory. So it gives you 
in which directory you are in. Okay. So that much of information is there in this prompt itself. So username, it gives you the username, it gives you the host name, the machine name, and it gives you the current working directory you are there. The tilde means home directory. If I switch to another directory, so that subdirectory will be displayed in this. Okay. And in CentOS or in RHEL, it, uh, it shows you the only the lowest level of subdirectory in the prompt, but in Ubuntu based operating systems, you will see the entire directory, working directory getting printed here. And sometimes if your path is very long, so it may display up to here, the prompt itself. So after that, you will be typing your command. But uh, in CentOS and RHEL, it displays only the the lowest level of directory. Okay, so that means if I change my directory into desktop, so it displays only the desktop here. But in case of Ubuntu, it shows you tilde slash desktop. And under that desktop, if I traverse through another directory, uh, in Ubuntu, it displays that entire path. In, in CentOS, it displays that lowest level of uh, directory only. Okay. Maybe I will not compare much with Ubuntu operating system because I'm not sure how many of you are interested in exploring that Ubuntu. Uh, as long as you are continuing your practicing in, in CentOS, this thing. So explaining this is sufficient. That is my assumption. So this is your file browser. Uh, initially, until you get uh, habituated with your Linux operating system, practice with file browser, that is fine. But don't get uh, traversing or files through only through file browser. You should practice your uh, traversing through directories and reading your files and displaying the contents of your files. You should, you should learn all those things through terminal as well. The reason is in your real time clusters, uh, Hadoop clusters, uh, you will not be given access to this GUI mode. You will not get the graphical user interface in, in real time clusters. Okay. So you will be given access to only the terminal mode, command line interface is only given to you. Okay, so if suppose if I am on to, uh, if I need to switch back to my home directory, the CD, and here I am able to see all the files and directories like this. But in terminal mode, I should watch that in LS, using the LS command, I can display all of them. Okay, so I have these many files in my home directory. So you will observe some of the files with tilde at the suffix. So that means they are work in progress files. There, this file is getting edited. So that editing file will be uh, saved like this. Okay. Now, so coming to the file system directory structure. So this is our root file system. So if you click on the file system, so you will get all the root level, the folders present in the, or the directories present in the root. Uh, directory okay so the same thing you can access this way also ls slash ls is for listing listing of your directories and listing of your files so 
even that displays the same folders here. Okay, so if you you should know the importance of at least a few of these directories. So out of them, bin, yes bin, temp, and user, var, and opt, okay, and etc, home. Yeah, so and you should understand at least the purpose of these many directories. Okay, so even lib is good to consider. So these many, uh, you, you should have understanding on these many uh, directories at least bare minimum. Okay, so here, so in the bin, So let me reopen that. Okay. So here bin and sbin directories. So the name itself tells us that it contains the binary files, bin files. So any executable, so any command that you can run from your terminal that should present in bin or sbin directories so even if you see so hadoop it should present somewhere in 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 either of these uh, bin directories so if not in these two uh, bin directories so basically we call these two as a system binary directories so anything that is executable as a system command so those those will be present in this so as of now we have seen cd uh, so this cp command is there here cd is not in this the cd will be in the other side i think okay so ls uh, for listing down the uh, directories and files you can see that here and if you don't find any of your executable in bin directory then the second place that you look here is sbin even if you don't find here also uh, then you will be uh, you should look at uh, user bin directories see in under user level binary directories will also be present So any of our user installed applications for those things, you will find uh, the executables here, most probably even the Hadoop command is present in this user bin directories. Okay, so this is one another important location that you should, you should be aware of. So CD, so in some location that's there, okay. So calendar, C++ application. So any user installed applications that will be present in user bin directories, the uh, executable file of that. Okay, under user, uh, under slash user directory, again, you will find that bin has been uh, some temp folder, lib folder, lib64, etc folder. Same like in your parent file system, right? So that is the importance of bin and sbin. They will contain system binaries. And next, so boot, it will contain the bootable, uh, so operating system booting uh, priorities and those things. And dev, dev uh, it contains any devices related information. We don't need to worry much about that. And etc. So etc is one of the important directory that, sh that you should be aware of. Uh, so when I say, I mean, this awareness, most of the times uh, 
it's more related to admins. Okay, understanding having thorough grip of these files, file system is mandatorily needed by admins, but good to have the developers as well. Okay, so ETC will have the configuration related files for all the applications that you have installed. Okay, so for example, I have installed Hadoop. For Hadoop configuration files, I will find in slash etc slash Hadoop slash conf directories. So these are my configuration properties, configuration files that are related to my Hadoop. So inside this Hadoop configuration folder, I can see various conf files. In the purpose of these configuration files, I will explain uh, sometime later. Okay. So similarly, uh, you I have installed HBase. HBase related configurations I can find here. So for any application that you install, you will find the conf files here. So in this location. So that is uh, one another important directory. And you will find home directory. So let's use, uh, let's say I have a 10 users created on my uh, the Linux operating system. So for all those 10 users, you will have a user home directories or users their own space directories, right? So they will have slash home slash username directories as the default. Okay, the same way here you have seen, right? Uh, when I open this terminal, so when I printed the current working directory, so slash home slash Cloudera. So that is the home directory of the Cloudera user. And it, it pointed to the same stuff. And if I go back, can come back to here. And let's say I have one more account called Shiva, then I will have slash home slash Shiva folder here. And when I log in with that username, so by default, my home directory will become that slash home slash Shiva. And this lib and lib64 will contain any library files that are needed by your operating system. Dot SO files means system object files only. So anything, uh, these are specific to your Linux operating system. Library files, you should understand that. So this is for uh, both, uh, lib64 is for 64-bit edition, and these are the common ones. And last and found is just to display the any of the uh, files that you have recovered through uh, some running, some recovery tools. Okay. Even the media to recognize your CDs, your pen drives, that stuff. And mount, MNT is for mounting any drives. So these, these things we rarely bother about. Okay. And OPT, OPT is sometimes you hear it uh, a lot. Okay. So OPT is for optional, software so if you are not satisfied something that that shipped with your default operating system then we will install our new applications into uh, this opt software opt directory so here you can see the cloudera is installed in slash opt directory and you can see the parcel repos PSD, there is nothing. Um, so, so its installation is um, both through the parcel setup and through the Cloudera manager as well. Okay, and you can see the liver office also. Uh, the liver office by default it will not come with your CentOS, so you have to install separate uh, packages for that. So you can pretty easily find in Google how to install LibreOffice in CentOS. You will find a 
uh, two to three sequence of commands. Okay, so you run them in the terminal, you will get your uh, MS Office counterpart for your CentOS will get installed. So what I'm trying to say is, so if you want to install any of your applications, people will select either slash opt directory or slash user slash lib directories. You can see in slash user slash lib, the Hadoop is installed. So all the in, inside Hadoop, you will find these directories again, same like your Linux or file system. So that is the reason why I'm trying to concentrate on the Linux and making you understanding the Linux file system. If you see any of Hadoop related tools installations directories, their directories will also look pretty similar to your Linux directories, right? So you, you can see bin and has been directories present. So to have the basic binaries and you have the ETC folder for configurations and you will have lib and libexec for storing your library files. So all the jar files needed. Okay, so any client specific jars and you have cloud specific here. Okay, so yeah. So you have your two options. So most of the times, uh, if you are installing any user specific softwares, user uh, people will go with user lib directories. And on the other case, if you want to install an application that should be accessible by multiple users on that uh, machine, so your administrators will go with slash opt directory as an option. Okay. So So that's a uh, difference between OPT and this user and the system you can see uh, we rarely look into this folder and temp is sometimes might be interested because uh, some of the log files will get generated into this temp folders only you can see the hadoop dfs and hive related uh, files will also be present hive related logs also you can see here uh, Your username, yeah, here I can see. So the folder contents could not be displayed. I don't have, uh, as a Cloudera user, I don't have permissions to view that. So here, if you see the lock, so this is secure, this is locked. And if I have into mark, that means I don't have access to that. And this temp folder, will get cleaned whenever you restart your operating system under user directory again it's the same same like your parent root file system you'll find all these things and these are specific to user level users different use so user bin again in user local you can find similar setup bin Yes, bin and etc lib lib exec lib uh, 64 all these are for libraries and some places if you find src these are kind of some source code if, if there are any source code is present that will be present in that and if you find any directories with share name this will be mostly the documentation documentation part so that's why you have info and man, man means manual. Okay, so your Linux commands manuals, this manual one, manual. So all your Linux commands manuals 
might be stored here. So, so user level applications for user level these things. Okay. One one quick question, Shiva. Yeah. Uh, is it, it is not needed like uh, we need to uh, keep the Hadoop files in user uh, lib Hadoop. We can even keep it in user local Hadoop and we can set the path, right? Yes, yes. You can do that. You, you can put a Hadoop files in any place. Okay. You can put in your home directory slash home slash cloud era or you can put in slash opt directories or you can put in slash user slash lib directories or you can put in slash user slash local uh, lib directories. So these are the directories that I'm taking as example and the uh, most of the times the administrators will follow those directories. Either it could be your own directory or slash opt directories slash user slash lib directories or slash user slash local slash lib directories. Apart from okay. these directories, you can even put them in any location, but that is not a standard practice mm -hmm. okay. that we follow. That's it. Okay. 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 So okay. you can even put in bin directories, but that's not a standard. That something looks like a weird. Who knows okay. the file system? They feel it like it's very weird uh, way of doing that. Okay, it's a practice they follow in the company, yeah. in the industry. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So the its purpose is different, right? It contains only the binaries. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So that's that's the reason uh, we don't put that into them. Okay. Okay. So so that is about user directory. Okay. So next, the last one, and the important one also. So under var, you will find all the log files getting generated. So you can see var log folder. So if you observe var log folder, so you can see all your Cloudera related uh, log files. So Cloudera SCM, software or Cloudera manager. I don't have permissions to it. So I can, whenever, whenever you feel like I don't have permissions, that means, so as a Cloudera user, I don't have view rights to see this. Okay. And if you see Flume NG, this is an, one of the tools that we are going to see. And if you go into Hive, you can see the Hive log messages here. And similarly, you can go into Hadoop. So here, Hadoop MapReduce, Hadoop uh, Yarn. So those messages got. You can check your log messages here. So most of the times, for uh, most of your applications, it could be Hadoop, Hbase, Hive, Impala, or Uzi, or anything, Flume, or Scoop, or anything. So for all those applications, you will find their log files in this var log directory. This is one of the important directory. Okay. So out of all these directories that we have seen, so at least a few directories I want you to remember is your home directory. So slash home slash username, you should be aware of. And what is the root directory slash and slash bin and slash has been some time but as a regular user you will not be having direct access to these things to traverse okay so slash user slash bin so here user will not have a usr okay this is not slash user so people will get confused sometimes so why i am highlighting here this uh, this is not slash user so in your linux file system your user directories will have slash usr followed by the subdirectories but in linux will have uh, sorry but in hadoop okay but in hadoop you will have slash user as your home directories let's say i have logged in with my uh, username shiva 
So my home directory in Linux will become slash home slash Shiva. And in HDFS, in Hadoop, my home directory will become slash, u, slash user slash Shiva. This is my home directory in Hadoop. But as of now, I didn't show the HDFS file system. But I'm trying to show this uh, difference in this user. When I say this USR, this user you should not get con confused. Okay. So this is one directory that you should remember user bin and uh, slash user slash lib and and slash etc for all the configurations and for slash tem for any temporary files and sometimes some of the logs and slash var slash log for some of the log files. Okay, so yeah, same like your windows, you can find all these documents, pictures, music, downloads, all these things uh, in your home directory. And anything that you download by default, it comes to your downloads folder. Okay, and your desktop is also part of your home directory. Okay. So you can explore these things. Okay. So all other options, I will leave it up to you for you to explore. So any questions uh, till now? So this is the a root directory for all the file system slash home slash user slash etc. Under etc again you will find password file which contains the passwords for all the users. Init tab uh, initialization stuff will be there. And under home if you have multiple users Shiva, Hadoop and Ubuntu one you, you can see multiple user home directories. Okay, so these things I already explained. So on shell also we talked about. Any questions so far? So here it is related to Cloudera and previous related to OS. Oh yes. Log is also in temp folder. So are we going to start Java after Linux today? Oh. Anand, you were not there yesterday. Yesterday night we had a basic Java refresher session. I, I sent the calendar invitation and you accepted it also. Almost like 10 people uh, attended yesterday for that Java refresher session. And I will be taking one more session for that. So uh, otherwise you can, uh, I will share the ID with uh, videos with you. Okay. Yes, Akila, uh, you're correct that kill minus nine followed by the process ID to kill that. Okay, anyway, I'm going to show those things. Okay. And log is also in temp folder. Yes, some of the logs will be stored in temp folder as well. Yes. 
So I didn't see your chat messages. No, I'm checking that. So log file means. <laughs> okay. Uh, Soumya, I mean, we'll be writing our loggers in our project, right? In our Java project. So you have written those. Uh, so when you are running the Java application, any information messages, warning messages, error messages, you will be writing into uh, using that logger. So you are writing into the log files, right? Same. Here for Hadoop, Hadoop application will write into one log file and Hive will write into another log file and Impala will write into another log file. So the status about your application. So what is, how many information messages, how many error messages, many warning messages also. Yeah, sure Narendra, I will share it with you as well. Okay, so I thought everyone will join yesterday, okay. So I don't have Office 5 in my application. Is it required to be separately downloaded and installed? LibreOffice, right? Yes, you need to uh, install it separately. Or else I will show you the commands uh, right here. Okay, so you'll have your Firefox browser. So this is your Firefox browser. So just click on that. So install, uh, so get the LibreOffice 64, LibreOffice for LibreOffice 5 or above for uh, CentOS 64 bit edition. Okay. So install on RHGL CentOS. So LibreOffice 5.2. So I will give you this link. I will paste it in the notes file. Okay. And uh, you should follow this these commands, RHEL commands, or I will uh, take these instructions. Maybe uh, I will write these things into. So follow this, uh, this, let me minimize this. Okay, so follow that guide. Uh, so in that, especially for your Red Hat Enterprise or CentOS, you have to follow this RPM based installation. Okay, for 30, uh, 64 bit, so you will have 64 bit only. Just have to download the latest version of RPM. So, one way of downloading it from the terminal itself is using the wget. Wget is for web get. So it, it will download and it will put that in your home directory. So from this URL or the other way is just directly open this URL in your web browser, your Firefox, even through your Firefox, you can download that. So either ways. 
Okay, so that is the purpose of WGET also. So we understood that as well. Now, so download CentOS. So once you download that, so this way it will complete uh, downloading of that. So once after you download, so if and any RPM file that you have to install, so you should we should use yum repository yum commands yum is the uh, application installer or remover okay so we have downloaded tar.zz file so tar archive file so first we have to untar that so untar that and then you will get rpm files so then you have to install that okay so you can install you can uh, go to that rpms folder m local install dot star dot r so these are the steps that you need to follow i think that's enough Okay, so that will take care of installing that. So it prompts you whether to go ahead or not. So just say yes, starting LibreOffice. So we'll have LibreOffice 5 notification. That's it. Those are the five, four steps. Just download, extract, and uh, change directory into RPMs. Use yum install. It could be either install or local install. Anything is fine. Yum install star.rpm under this RPM directory. Okay. So yeah, any more questions? Okay. So next. Let me move on to commands now. So already we have seen few, but uh, let's understand. So any uh, Linux command syntax looks like this. Command name followed by the options. So any flags to your command and followed by input arguments. Okay, so ls minus l ls is the command for listing your files and minus l for long listing so that is options additional options that you can specify these are optional also these are not mandatory just options and followed by input arguments so what is the directory parent directory under which you want to view the files okay so this is so one uh, one single command and also you can concatenate commands or you can pipe the commands. That means you can run one command and its result you can send it to other command. That result you can send it to another command. So PS is the command to view all the processes on your Linux machine. And PS space all all is an option to view all the process ps all so i'm sending the results of this to the next command so by concatenating the, them by by chaining them by pipe symbol this is the pipe symbol and this output will go into this command grep java so grep is a command to search for your text this is same as like a search and followed by your text message in a single quotes or something or you can provide in single quotes or double quotes or, or you can leave it as this so grab java and you will find how many records that are there with uh, so you will get all the records with java keyword 
and you will pass that into WC minus L. So WC is for word count. So it counts either words or lines or characters. So if you if your option is minus L, it counts the number of lines. Okay. So this is nothing but this entire command will do. Find out how many Java processes are running. Okay, let me close this. So PS all means displayed all the processes. So out of this, if I want to get, and similarly, JPS means I was showing uh, on last week. So Java processes, these are the Unix processes and these are Java processes. And under sudo JPS, you can run all our demons, right? And if I want to check whether uh, my name node is running or not, so grep, so name node. So it printed me the two lines. Okay. So it name node I have, secondary name node and name node. It extracted only with this keyword, this search word. And so how many are there? Counties two. So that's that is chaining of your commands. Okay, and let's get started with the different types of commands. Also, I think I have prepared a Linux commands cheat sheet. Let me find whether I have that in this or not. Uh, if not, I will place that in, in today's files, uh, no worries, but the basic uh, commands that are listed down in the PPT itself, okay. So mainly the commands that you might need is some of the file handling commands, so text processing, how to create a file, how to write into a file, how to save the file. and the process management commands and administration commands like changing the permissions of those directories and giving permissions to users. Okay, so let's see these uh, types one by one. So file handling commands, these are same like your Windows MKDIR and followed by the directory name to create a directory. Okay, so you, I am not going to run all these commands. Okay, so that is uh, one another assignment for you guys. I've written perform file operations, create directories, create files, all these things. Complete. Uh, practicing all the commands given in the PPT. Okay, so I am leaving this up to you. This is not something new where you will not find responses in the Google, but even that that Google search is also not needed. So syntaxes are given, you just need to run and execute play with them. So make directory, directory name, remove directory, change directory, and change directory into that cd directory path. So here, cd directory path. So this directory path can be of two types again, right? So one is absolute path, and second one is relative path. 
suppose uh, if I give like this, um, if I give desktop, so this desktop is relative to my current working directory. So this this is one way of navigating to this. And other way of switching to this directory is cd slash user slash home slash home slash cloudera slash desktop. So giving the complete path starting from slash is absolute path. So this is another way. So in both the cases, you are into the same directory. So one fundamental, so if your, if your path is starting with slash, then that is your absolute path. If you're not starting with slash, then that is a relative path. And in most of the scenarios in your shell scripts or anywhere in your programs or anywhere, using the absolute path is the safest way. And that is the recommended recommended one to go with. So always try to use the absolute paths in your scripts. So maybe in your terminal while practicing, that's fine, not an issue. But yeah, in shell scripts or whenever you're writing in any programs. Okay. So CP copying file one file to uh, copying file from one location to another location. And so MV for moving a file. So moving old file to new file. So here, this is also used for renaming purpose. We don't have a separate command for renaming. If you want to move a particular file, let's say, Hadoop 1 file is there. You want to move that into Hadoop 2. Yes, move Hadoop 1 to Hadoop 2, which is same as renaming only. Okay. So ls, ls is for listing directory contents. So under ls, you should know some the basic options. So just ls will list down all the files under that. So just listing down. So long listing is also there, ls minus l. So in this long listing, it displays you uh, the file permissions, file permissions, and uh, this is uh, your user count, I think so. Okay. Um, and followed by the username, this is the username, and this is the or the owner name, this is the group, the user group, and this is the size of the file, and this is the last date and time, uh, when was this modified or accessed, when was this last modified, okay, and followed by the, the file name. So this is long listing we call, so ls minus a is there. So along with, uh, if I go to home directory, I can show you more files. So you can see dot and dot dot and dot bash history, dot bash logout, dot bash RC file. So all the files that are starting with dots also getting displayed. If I display only ls, see the difference here. So you don't have that any files that are prefixed with dot. So in Linux, if you want to hide any file, you have to create that file with prefix as dot. So all these dot prefixed files are hidden files in, in your Linux. So by default, you will not be able to see them with just listing, you you should use A, A for all. And if you want long listing also, use LA. Okay, so then you can even better and uh, list on this. And 
if you want to uh, sort them or uh, yeah time basis i think time or date wise see these are time basis sorted order so may 29th so today's date and the older files are coming here and if you want to reverse this sorted order so all the latest files came down and the old files came here and this is the most frequently used command that you see so ls minus altr and followed by the, the directory okay so most commonly used command that is okay and yes so hidden files how will you hide identify hidden files how will you view the hidden files in terminal so using ls minus a and you have option in your browser also file browser also so in your file browser by default you are not able to see the hidden files if you enter control h control h if i press the control h i can see i should see the hidden files also you can see dot sql line dot python x dot pulse dot notlist dot mozilla dot local dot icons all these were hidden right so these folders were not there dot config folder was not there and this so dot bash rc file i was not able to see initially right again if i press control h those files will get hidden so now i am not able to see that dot bash rc file or dot folders okay so similar to your shortcuts desktop sharp shortcuts or anywhere if you want to create a shortcut in windows machine you will click on that file and right click short, create a shortcut right so here in linux you can create links so ln file 1 so for which you want to create a shortcut and file 2 okay and in a particular directory if you want to look for a uh, uh, any file that if you want to search for a file okay so for example uh, you are in uh, this directory let's say i have in home directory i want to list up all the log files find dot hyphen name so anything that has in the name that has star dot log so these many logs are there in my home directory that is the purpose of find command and here i have shown only one option by name you can also extract by time so what is the latest file that is created in the directory and what is the oldest file that is created and uh, you can also check by various you can also get by the owner get by timestamps all those things but i will leave that as as an assignment and in your terminal for copying anything copying any text since I'm doing, I'm showing you here. So right click, copy, that is one option. And other option, in Windows machines, we see Control C, right? But in your Linux terminals, so sometimes users will press by default Control C. Control C will actually kill the existing running process. You should not press Control C. You should press Control Shift C. Control shift c for copy
control shift plus c for copy and control shift v for paste okay so as part of your assignments uh, provide uh, one example for each of the options in find command example okay so i want everyone to submit these assignments to me okay i am not just simply giving for the sake of giving so if you complete these things so you will be able to catch up the coming uh, stuff the subsequent sessions very easily otherwise uh, you your backlog will keep on growing okay the topics backlog will keep on growing so rm directory we have seen and if you want to remove your file inside the directory yes you can use this and always be careful be careful with rm so most of our team members are developers i mean initially so they used to give they used to some give some kind of uh, expression stuff rm minus r is for recursive removal inside a directory if you so two ways of removing a directory one way is rm dir followed by let's say desktop in under desktop if i want to remove everything so that is, this is one way or rm is just for removing a file and with minus r a recursive that means recursively delete this desktop file and inside that any files are there so it removes all of them and suppose uh, instead of it, it asks for you a prompt if you want to delete force delete you can apply rm minus rf this is to delete any file but sometimes people try giving some dot or something so his intention is to give dot star some log file or something like this but if there is any space you are gone instead of deleting that one single file you are deleting that entire directory so you have to be very careful with our removal commands that happened in so in uh, in our projects also some of our developers deleted all the tomcat applications in the linux machine and again all the teams had to redeploy their applications in that tomcat directories okay so you should be careful especially with rm minus r so bet better is go file by file instead of rm minus r just remove file by file and don't apply the minus rf uh, minus force removal just just remove try to remove it and see if, if it throws any warning message or something and then investigate that warning message and then go ahead and delete it okay and one more important uh, command that i can give you is history to print all the command that we have seen so far so this is the history of commands that i was running till now so find ls minus lr this thing okay so suppose i have run some big command let's say so this is the command that i ran sometime back okay so i didn't remember that command command completely but i want to search for that command so then 
I have a shortcut in the terminal control R which is reverse search control plus R for your preference I will type that I use this uh, control R very frequently okay so control plus R reverse search reverse search in the commands in the already executed I think someone is getting dropped. So there is no recycle bin like Windows. Uh, so why file name color coded? What is the significance of coloring? Uh, yes, I, I will come to that, uh, Nitu. Uh, during the permissions explanation, does it not move into trash if you delete a file? Yes that will be moved into a trash yes we have a recycle bin kind of uh, stuff even in linux that we call it as a trash okay so let me show you that if you are interested in that um, let me delete let me create some sample file right click create document Okay, and to write, to deal with your note files, so as I was telling you, we have two types of editors. One is with gedit, graphical user interface editor, or vm, vi editor. Vi editor opens it in the uh, shell. This will open it like a notepad. Okay, you will say all the save, open all these options. So I have written something and so if i remove okay I, I was showing something else sorry so if i need to search for yarn see as soon as i type, type this yarn so it it searched in the commands in the back command in the history of the commands it prompted with this result okay so now i can select this command and I can modify. So if I need to rerun this with different inputs, I, I can modify that and I can run that. Okay, so this is one of the command to submit the map reduce job. Instead of typing this much of command, so I simply searched in the history. So I got the command reference. Wherever I need changes, I will make the changes and resubmit that command. Okay, so that is one shortcut uh, which I was telling. And yes, you are asking like rm minus rm t1 file, right? So remove regular file t1. So this is the warning message you will get. Okay, so now this file is not present here, right? So minus f. The purpose of minus f right if i say rm minus f force delete t2 it didn't even ask me for any yes or no okay so especially this minus f option is needed when you are dealing with shell scripts because in shell script in every place if you want to remove a file you can't user can't provide a sub no option right so that's why we use that option in cell script now coming to your question trash yes we do have so go to windows you will find trash this is same uh, go to desktop you'll find trash same like in windows uh, recycle bin and empty recycle bin like empty trash or open this so you can see uh, I think I didn't enable um, the trash for deleted files there okay so 
So that's why it didn't come to the trash. But so one option with file browser, you will find that is, so you will move it into trash. In file browser, you don't have the option of delete. Okay. So you have option of only moving into trash. In the command, the terminal, so it got, uh, in the terminal, uh, so I, I might not have, by default, it didn't enable the trash for that. Okay. So there might be some settings need to enable for that. Or even in the terminals, uh, you can see how to enable the trash or you can, you can try that. Explore that out based on your free time. Okay. So, yeah. So that is about that. So PWD we have seen. And also if you want to see the list of users, list of all users, and with, with uh, which username you have logged in, and process tree displays all the processes running in the system, and PS displays processes owned by the current user. And some of the help commands, man manual followed by the command name, info followed by the command name. If you don't know about that command and want to know the syntax and its usage, let's say I don't know about PWD. So this is the manual page for PWD. And info PWD, even this prints the prints the name of the current directory and how to use is this, all that stuff documentation you will find here. So control Z is coming, uh, is the command to come out of that. And who prints all the users? Who am I? Gives the, with what user you logged in. And that was PS3 that I was showing you. The various processes that are running in this process tree. VMware tools, Java tools, GVF, Genome, all these things are running in this. Okay, so control L for clear your screen or even the clear. Either of these two will work. Control L or clear. For text processing, to view any file contents, we have cat command. Cat displays the contents of the file. And echo displays the string that is given to it. Or if it is a variable, it displays the value of that variable. And grep we have seen. WC also we have seen. Number of minus L for number of lines, minus W for votes, minus C for characteristic. And system administration. This is one of the important command that you should know. CH mode. Okay, so before understanding this, I should explain this ls minus l. Okay, so here in this, you can see the first 10 characters this way. This is we call as a permissions. So in this 10 characters, the first character is something special and remaining nine characters are for permissions, controlling the permissions, security on that file. Okay, so the first character denotes whether the current path that you are referring is a directory or a regular file or a symbolic link or whether it's a shortcut. Shortcut means in, in Linux, it's a link. Right? So the first character, the first byte will be hyphen. So same like here will be hyphen if it is a regular file. So cmapi.sh is a file. So that's why you have hyphen in the first byte. If it is a des uh, if it is a directory, like desktop is a directory, documents is a directory, downloads is a directory, examples is a directory you will find a D in that. And if it is a link, if it is a shortcut, 
you will find L there. Okay, and coming to this remaining nine characters. So we control the permissions at three levels. Same like if you are from any SQL background or something. So we control the permissions with three ways. So one is the user or owner. And second one is user group. And third one is others. So any Linux system uh, logged in resource is uh, categorized into these three groups. So whether if a file is created, okay. So if I, there should be one owner to that file so that someone who created that file and so users are maintained into groups. If that user is belonging to an admin group or HR department group or or finance group. So based on that, users will be grouped into some user groups. Okay, so HR group and finance group. Okay, or uh, developers group. Okay, let's say if a file is created by a HR person. Okay. So let's let's take one example. So Rakesh is our HR. So he created that uh, the file. Okay, let's say some employee CTC something. Employee uh, CTC restructure restructure dot PDF. So this PDF file he created that, or some some text file or any 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 file. Let's uh, let's assume, but now. So Rakesh created that. So and he belongs to HR group. And as a Shiva, I belongs to others. So this CTC structure, since he created, he is the owner. And by default, so he will be having read write access to that. And so based on his intention, he can give permission to, if he feels like other team members in the HR group also wants to see that file. So he can give access to only to this HR group, which makes sense, right? So, but not to others, but not to finance group, or, but not to developers group, but not to admin group. Okay. So, so how are we going to handle these three security levels? So we'll have three security groups here so out of the nine characters the first three characters are for the owner and the owner permissions again will be controlling at three levels so read so for read it's r for uh, write it is w and for execute or traverse through di the directory it is x so this is character character representation also we have numeric representation numeric values given to them so for read uh, the numeric value is 4 for write the value is 2 and for execute value is 1 okay so now if I want to give, uh, by default, the owner will have that read write uh, permissions. If if I create, let 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 me create a file. Okay. So I'm going to write some contents into. Go. Hello, uh, Santos into t1.txt file now ls minus l t1.txt you see by default 
I, I am the Cloudera user. Okay. So I got the read and write access, but not the execute access. So first three bytes represent the user level permissions, R, W, X. R is for read, and W is for write, and X is for executable. So by default, even if I create it, I will not be having executable permission to that. So I have to give that executable permission by myself. Okay. And so, and also it, it gave the default permission to the group as well. So the group is having, I belong to Cloudera group. Even my group name is also Cloudera. So, so my group has read and write access on this file, but not the executable. And others, so HR group is having access to read and write. And as others, others don't have uh, access to write that, update that, or delete that. They can only read that file. Or if you want to suppress that even read, you can make it as hyphen. So whenever you want to remove any permission, you have to make it as hyphen. So the command to change these permissions is ch mode. So if I am the owner of this file, I can change the permissions of this file. If I am not the owner of this file, I can't change the permissions. Only the admin user can change. So I logged in with user Cloudera and there will be a uh, super user, the ultimate user, or I can say admin user in your Linux systems that is called as root. Root will have permissions to all the files, all the processes, everything. So he will have all the rights. And root permissions will not be given to any developers, regular users. And sometimes if you want uh, root level access with your username only, then they will add your username into the pseudo users list. Pseudo users list means do as a super user. You want to run a command for which you, as a regular user, you don't have access. Okay, as a regular user, you don't have access to that. But uh, if admin has added you into pseudo users, if you run that as a pseudo, as a uh, super user, then you will be able to run that. Okay, so for now, if since I created this file, I can give permissions to myself. CH mode and if I want to give the permission to user, yes, I can give permission to myself. For user, you, for giving plus, uh, for executing x on t1.txt. Now, if you check this, so I got x here. And for group, it's the same in place of G will add X. I, I have given the execute permissions for both for group as well. And but I don't want to uh, allow the group members to write, update, or delete my file. Then see the delete has gone here. And same way for others, I have wo, and I don't want to give that read permission also for others. Others should not see that. So that means I have full rights on my own file, and my group is just having the read and executable permissions, and others are not able to see that also. They don't have any permissions on that. So this is one way, CH mode, O, o for others, uh, this way. You can give all the permissions in one go itself also, also. So O plus RWX. So all the three permissions given. And if you don't specify whether it's a user group or this thing, then let's see 
what will happen. So if I don't specify whether it's a user, group or owner, or others, yeah, user, group or others, then it gives to everyone. RWX is given to all the three. Okay, and the color code significance you are asking, right? So if you check here, so here the file is not executable. It was displayed with plain color, black color. Now it has given the execute permissions. Then it color got changed. Now if I make, uh, if I give the complete permissions, uh, if it is a directory or something, it should show in the red color. Okay, so these all these directories will be in one color, and where you don't have any um, executable permissions, they will have different color, and the jar files will have different color. So based on the file, the stuff, and if I give full rights, uh, they should come. It purely depends on your configuration that how you deal with. Okay, so if I want to give, let's say workflow templates. So if I want to give all the permissions to this, ch mod plus rw x2 so i didn't copy that properly So here, Uzi example is having my pay. Let me show you this. Yes. So this is a directory with full permissions given. So this is a directory. Uh, I didn't get applied. So since this is a directory uh, with all the permissions for everyone, then it get highlighted in different uh, way. It get the background shading. So it, it's a kind of alert for you that this file is in danger. It can get deleted by anyone. Okay, so especially that much of color coding is uh, enough. Now, so that is character representation. Character representation of your uh, permissions. Now, so the numeric representation I was talking about, right? So R for four and W for two and X for one. And generally we don't specify this as four to one. We combine that as seven. Seven means all three permissions, read, write, and execute. So suppose if I give six, it is four plus two, right? And suppose if I give four, it is only read. If, I, if it is five, read plus uh, execute okay so if i make 755 first seven is for user second five is for the group and third five is for the others okay now if you check that ls minus l t1.txt yes you can see this is seven this is five and this is five. And if you want to remove that execute permission for others, make it seven five four. Let's go. Okay. So this is one of the very important command to control the security on your files and identify whether you have permissions to a particular directory or a file. And the same command holds good. Why I'm stressing on these commands is the same commands are present in HDFS also. Since HDFS is 
built uh, on Linux file systems. So under the idea of Linux file systems, you will find similar kind of folders there and similar kind of commands there and similar kind of security permissions, everything there in HDFS. So there, it makes my life easier. So that's why I'm, I'm concentrating that much here. Okay. So 777 means it gives all the right, all the full permissions to that. Then some of the advanced commands, if I want to switch user to some other user, uh, switch users space username, that will be, uh, I will be logged into that Siva user. If, if I use SU space Shiva, I will be logged into that Siva user and it prompts me to enter the password. And PASSWD command to change your user current user's password. And if you simply specify SU space hyphen, that will be logged in into your root user. Okay, so you can with the root user you can do anything. So by default, Cloudera is the password for your root user on your Quick Start VMs. So it is pointing to the root location. So with the root user account, you can do anything that you want. You can run, you can remove any files, all those things. And some of the important commands are like, so DF to display the, uh, how much space is, disk space is free. And DU is how to display the, how much disk space is utilized. And here minus H will help you in displaying that size in, so here we have seen this, right? Uh, in the home directory, LS minus L, you have seen these sizes in bytes but you can't understand those bytes. So you can convert that into human readable format. So 2.8 MB, 229 MB, so these things. Now you can see whether they are in KBs or MBs with just an additional option H, human readable. Okay, and DU, DF, same way, du minus h, so it displays the disk usage of all the directories, if I don't provide any path, okay. And if I provide a path, slash home, slash cloud error, and if I specify disk free, so how much is utilized on that slash home, so 27 GB total size, available is 24 GB. Used is 26%. Okay, so these are some of the advanced commands. Yeah, I know that I'm running out of time, but give me a few more minutes so that I can wrap up the Linux things today itself. Okay, so you can, you can try all these things had the command to view the uh, first few lines of your file, cat command to display the contents of your file, tail command to view the last few lines of your file, and a touch to change the file timestamps, and tr command to translate characteristics from, so one characteristic to another character. It's like a replace, find and replace. tr is same like, Find and replace. IF config to get the IP address related information, same as IP config on your Windows. Yes, PS for listing down the processes and get the process ID there on left side and use that kill minus nine followed by the process ID. And next at C to see the all the uh, IP addresses and the port numbers that are busy in the system and SSH and SCP. These two are related to secure shell. So SSH is used to log in into other username on another different machine. You can log in into a remote machine which is connected to the network. 
So on to that machine, you can log in this SSH. And SCP, so from your current machine to that remote machine, you can transfer the file. Okay, so those file exa uh, those command examples uh, somewhere you might see during our sessions itself, don't worry. Or you can find examples uh, somewhere in the Google or even in our blogs also. So some of the date commands, the date, if you want to display them percentile by percentile, m percentile d, and date in this way formats. Okay, so various date formats. And text editors I have been showing you the G edit, and VI and nano editors are also there. Okay. So in VI, if you want to open t2.txt file, so if that is not there, so the file will get open. So I can write my file contents. So this way, and if I want to save this file contents, yes, escape shift w q or w q okay so write and quit if you don't want to save just to q q for kit enter okay so that shortcut have already given here so to quit without saving escape plus colon plus q and with saving escape plus colon plus wq so here wq okay so to navigate left and down upper right on that page you can you can explore these things so pattern matching with grep we have already seen regular expressions uh, is a very broader topic that i would like you to explore that more and so if you put these commands, the sequence of commands in a .sh file, so let's say if I write so two or three commands into file.sh file, so that will become your shell script. If I put pwd host name, then next date, okay, uh, next. So any uh, any such commands like okay. So if I write sequence of commands into a dot sh file and run that, that is nothing but your shell script. By default, if you check that. You will not have executable permissions on that. So you don't have execute permissions. So you should make that as executable plus x for executable for everyone. And then dot slash file dot sh or sh space file dot sh. So it printed me the current working directory. It printed me the host name. It printed the date and time as well. All the three commands executed in the sequence. So that means you can write any, you can control, you can write any any of your logic also here in the sequence. You can execute these statements in sequence. And you have if else conditions. But here, if the closing uh, keyword for if is the reverse of this if, fi. And for else if we have el if and else we have el like this. Okay, and for loop we have this way for i equal to zero i less than same as your uh, C language or Java, but we have do and done. So all your body statements of your for loop should be present in do and done. Okay, so just uh, put these statements into some cell script and run this and observe uh, just running that. Okay, 
And within any of your text, if you have any unique statement, we'll, uh, again, who am I is a Unix command. And this is a string. Within that, if you have any Unix uh, commands, then we can enclose them by back ticks, this back quotes. So then this is treated as a, a Unix command. And passing arguments, so from the command line, so you can do this way, like uh, echo dollar zero and echo dollar one. We accept the parameters by positional notation and we do that. We pass the parameters to this as such. Shiva, is it like arc zero and arc one in uh, Java? Yeah, same, same. Yes, exactly. Same like in pig, uh, Akila, you have gone through that pig sessions, right? There we have accessed the parameters and positional notation, right? Yeah. yeah. The same way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So here, dollar zero means the command itself. So that got printed. So dollar one means your first argument. This is the string that got printed as it is. Okay. So that is how you will pass arguments. And also in your script, if, if you want to check whether arcs are arcs of length greater than zero or not. So that way we have if dollar hash greater than zero. So dollar hash is two. Dollar hash gives the count of parameter arguments that you received. So here it is telling that dollar hash greater than zero while do print all those arguments. Okay. Okay. So that way you can practice the many things. The cell variables dollar one to dollar nine, all the param positional parameters. Dollar zero is the the command itself. Dollar hash is the number of arguments, and dollar question mark is the exit status of the last command that was executed. Okay, and that much is enough. I mean, we rarely use these things. And reading user input, let's say if you have a code, please enter your name and it will prompt, uh, you, if you type something there in your prompt, whatever you type, that will be captured into this name. Okay, and you can, so the variable that you created, this is like a variable into which you are capturing, right? Scanf. Okay, so that, you are getting into name variable so you can put that you can display its contents by accessing that variable as dollar name dollar variable okay so these are pretty simple i want you to give it a try if else conditions loops case statement okay so do while for loop okay so this is the last slide so, so environment variables. So environment variables means, so if you want to define a particular variables, if, if you create a variable in your shell script, that variable will be accessible only in that shell script. But there is, if you want to declare a global variable, which should be available in, which should be available in all the shell scripts. For example, if I uh, echo dollar uh, Java underscore home or something, so it it might be present somewhere. Let me try whether it's present there or not. Uh, file dot sh. I think it's not there. Okay. Um, so environment variable is something uh, that you can access across all the shell scripts and all the commands. Okay. So anything that you declare inside your shell script that is a local variable, 
if you want to make it as an environment variable, you have to export that. Let's say I want to expose, uh, I don't want to expose Java code. I want to expose uh, department, department equal to, so big data. So export. And if I want to echo its value, display its value, so DUPT. So it got exported here. Okay, and let me try to see that whether I can access that in this or not. So echo. So this this is not found in this shell script. So I want I can make that as global by adding that into uh, dot bash rc file which is your installation script. So as long as you are in this terminal, so you will have, uh, so as long as you are in that same terminal, you can access all those variables. And even after the closing of your terminal and reopening your terminal, if you want to access those variables, we'll put those variables into your .bashrc file which is a initialization script okay so that initialization script file which will be present in your home directory you can see control h get the dot bash rc file so you can edit this either with g edit you can add your environment variables have path have phoenix underscore home Okay, actually I doubt this if else condition that might be one another reason. So Phoenix underscore home is my one variable there. So it is able to print me the Phoenix path. It's able to access that. That's a global environment variable. So if anything that is local to your script, declare them as variable name equal to value. So that is enough. That is local variables. And if you want to make it as an environment variable so that it can be accessible across the environment in any script, then you should export it. So that export the variable name equal to its value. And that, that is again a temporary environment variable. So once you close the terminal, it will not be able to access. And if you want to make it permanent, you should add it into dot bash. Okay. So that's it from the slides. I have given you some samples, uh, sample cell scripts in the examples codes here. So examples with source code. So I will put that into your this um, Google Drive. So some uh, shell scripts like nested if examples. So we are nested if uh, you just need to put this into you just need to put this into your no your one of the shell script dot sh file. Okay. So it's prompting uh, it's printing some messages if you enter whatever value. So it reads that into this and based on that value. You can either use hyphen EQ for equality checking or double and equal to also. Okay, that's up to you. And the same way, greater than or hyphen GT. Similarly, less than or hyphen LT. LT for less than. Okay, so I want you to uh, run these scripts and understand these basic shell scripts. Okay, and uh, so menu UI and command line arguments script. These are simple uh, scripts only, just to do while and they're going some statements, exit to come out of the script.
Okay, so I want you to practice these scripts and come up with answers to these assignments. Okay, so perform all the file operations, examples for all the find commands, and a loop, uh, write a for loop to print one to 100 values, and write a shell script to accept input from the user, whether uh, he likes even or odd, and if he enters even, you should print all the even numbers from one to 100, and if he likes odd, you should print all the odd numbers from one to 100 and create some environment variables and display them in terminal and read a file through shell script. So this part I didn't cover in the session I'm leaving it up to uh, your research. Okay, do some Google and get that loaded. Get, the, get that done. Okay, so any questions? I know I think I have overutilized your time. Is it too complex? So what is metadata? I think STTY, not sure. There were so many questions, I think sudo su what is the command to know the admin for particular file that is created for every file you don't have a separate admin okay so there will be only one root user so that you will get, switch to su space minus that i have shown you right and uh, so the owner of the file to know the owner of the file just ls minus l you will get the username and the group name also there, right? I have shown you that. And let me answer your questions. So can we do it through numbers? 4 to 1. 4 to 1, no, 7, you should use the sum of those numbers that I gave you there, right? So you should tell the sum only, not 4 to 1, 4 to 1, 4 to 1 kind of stuff. How can we hide the user? Hide the user. Uh, I'm not sure exactly. Uh, the admin can remove that user. Okay, so removal of a user is possible. Hiding a user, I'm not sure even if that is possible in Windows also. Okay, so what will be the save path for? V editor save path okay good question um, so from whichever directory you are opening that VI so in that same directory that file get uh, saved so I was opening t2.txt from VI right so this got saved in my home directory only so since I opened that VI from my home directory path in the terminal Okay, so from whichever directory in the terminal you open that VI into that directory only, it, it saves. Okay, so what is metadata? Data about data. Why is this all of a sudden this came into context? I didn't talk about metadata. How do I access Google Drive and material? Anand, Anand you have access, right? Anand Asmira, I have given you access. Huh? Is it Anand Asmira or some someone else? Uh, see, what, see, what is, see what this is Anand only, Anand Asmira. How do I access the drive? I don't have the link. You don't, you, you might have received the link in the first day itself. No, I did not actually, you know, that was the problem. First day, okay. I just had the email. I just have received only email invitations. Uh, to view the Google Drive? No, to just for the meetings. That's it. For the meetings, not from the Google Drive. How come? 
let me let me solve it here uh, let me check once again um, you have access Hadoop training zoom this is Okay. It's, it's abajmera at gmail.com. Yes, abajmera. Given you the view access. Tutorial dot is the password. Okay. Shared with one person. Anyone who has link can view. Okay, so did you get email? Okay, or I will get the shareable link. Or um, yeah, uh, Siva, Siva, I got the link. You got the link, right? Okay. So that is one time shared link. Uh, okay. So link sharing is disabled. So anyone missing access to that? Sorry guys, I mean, I'm taking a long time today. I thought I will finish it up in one go, the entire Linux. Okay. So I think if everyone is uh, fine, then we'll meet at the same time tomorrow at seven o'clock AM, seven AM tomorrow morning with the HDFS concepts. Okay, so enough of Linux concepts. If you practice these shell scripts and go through the slides and come up with solutions to those assignments, yes, you are good enough to uh, survive as a Hadoop developer. The, you, you already got the Linux skills that are needed for Hadoop developer. Okay, so there are some advanced commands and many things. Those are especially needed for so I can say either advanced developers into only the Linux developers or the Hadoop administrators, I can say. Okay, so this, this extent is sufficient, more than sufficient. Okay. So, uh, one, one, one quick thing, this is Anand. Um, yeah, Anand. How, how about the material, like, you know, the PowerPoint? Yes, you are getting that in the drive. See in the drive, I just see your day one and day two zips. That's it. In those in those in those zip files, you will find them. Okay, okay. So day one, day two zip file. Okay. Yep. See, you can find the PDFs. You can find the video. You can find the notes. You can find any texts that you chatted with me and questions and answers in the chat. You will get all all those things for that day. Got it. No problem. Okay. That's perfect. In today's file, you will get uh, the slides. You will get the uh, sample user programs and uh, sample cell scripts and the assignments file, everything and the recorded video also, everything. Okay, I will also upload the Java videos also into that. I will share it with everyone. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. Bye bye.